Hey everybody, Britt Davenport here with Norvice. Thank you for joining me at my bench today. Today we're going to be tying a chronomid pattern called a Tonquanamid. It was originated by Tom Murray in the early 70s. It was originally known as the Tonqua Lake Chronomid, and then it was renamed by Dave Elliott. A good friend, Bill Jollymore, turned me on to this pattern for lake fishing, and at the same time also to the book Contemporary Fly Patterns of British Columbia by Art Lindgren. This fly can be located on page 62, uh, but there's a, a zillion other really good patterns in here. So I would encourage you to get it if you don't have it. Um, this fly can be fished many ways. Uh, you can float, dress the entire thing with floatant and fish it in the film. You could put split shot ahead of it and sink it. Or if you treat just the ostrich hurl, with float in, it'll actually, the back end will hang down in the water. Uh, I haven't tried it yet for our freestone streams here in Idaho, but I have a feeling it would be pretty effective there as well. Our cutthroats seem to really enjoy peacock. With that, let's get started. So for a hook, I'm using a Mustad 3906B in 10. This fly can be tied anywhere between a 4 to a 16. You're only probably limited by um, the size of peacock hurl. I sure would like to know which lakes have a uh, size 4 coronamid in them. I'm pretty sure those are the ones up there in British Columbia. They sure aren't in central Idaho. Um, anyways, uh, thread I'm using Semperfly Classic Waxed in A dot in white. Uh, the pattern calls for black, but I uh, will explain here shortly why I'm using white. So I'm going to start by dressing the hook. We're just going to lay down a thread base. For the tag and rip, rib, I'm going to be using uh, Semperfly French Oval Tinsel in silver. When you cut a piece off, make sure you cut it a little bit longer since we'll use it for the tag and the rib. So again, cut that in, tidy it up. I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. Try to tie it the length of the body. Um, it doesn't have to be an extremely smooth underbody, but we don't want any weird bumps or lumps, that sort of thing. We're going to bring it all the way slightly into the bend, that's where the tag will be. And then advance the thread back up to about where the barb is. I've already pinched the barb, but, uh, well, maybe I did. Yeah, anyways, where the barb is or would be. Go ahead and put a half hitch in. Bring your thread over to your thread post. I like to tighten my tension not down for this. It just gives me a little bit more control. We're just gonna take three to four wraps. It's your choice on how many. If there's a few gaps between them, you can use your thumb to kind of pinch that together and squish it back. Now I'm gonna tie this down. But I'm not gonna cut it off because this is what we will use for the rib here in a minute. I'm just going to use a, a hair clip to hold that back out of my way. So for the body, we are using peacock hurl. Uh, for this size, I'm gonna grab five or six pieces on a smaller one. You might not need as many. So we're gonna go ahead and just break those fragile tips off. If anybody has ever watched me demo tie, you know this is my absolute um, favorite material to work with on the Norvice. I used to get really frustrated with it when I first started tying because I would always break it. So I've tied that in along the shank. Again, um, just try to keep a somewhat smooth underbody. We're going to wrap that all the way back to where that tag starts. Go ahead and put a half hitch in. Bring your thread over to your post, and you, if you bring your peacock chenille, we're at about a 45 degree angle. Loosen your tension nut and spin. So we're just making 
a peacock curl chenille out of that. So what that does is that reinforces it to where I, even if a fish's tooth does catch it, one of those pieces breaks, it's still not going anywhere. So then we just drop it down and advance our thread all the way to the front. And then we'll just tie that off. See, that one broke already off the front. Trim those butts out. Make sure we've got a nice flat base here. This is where we're going to tie in that ostrich curl. Before we do that, I'm going to put a half hitch in again. This is where we'll rib it. Generally with peacock curl, you would counter rib it, which just reinforces the peacock curl. Uh, because we made a chenille rope out of it, you don't necessarily have to counter wrap it. I still like to. I think it, it then sits on top of it more so than getting down in the grooves. So either way is just fine. It is just for segmentation and flash at this point and really won't add anything um, to the actual strength of that peacock curl. And trim that out of the way. And so this is where the ostrich hurl and the white thread come in. I'm gonna do with the ostrich hurl exactly what I did with the body here. Which is why I wanted white thread and not black. Black would show through. For a fly this size, I'm going to grab probably about three pieces. Uh, smaller, you might only need one or two. Just grab that by the tips. I'm going to trim those tips off so that they're nice and even. Go ahead and tie those in. Go ahead and put a half hitch in. So rather than bringing my thread all the way over to my thread post, I'm just going to use my finger as a thread post. These are a lot shorter than peacock curl. So by doing that, I can just hold both of them with the one hand and then loosen that tension knot and then just spin it up. I just find it easier. I do this with peacock curl too. If I only need just a little bit of it, um, I just find it to be easier. So we're going to go ahead and wrap that to the front. Unwrap that from the hook. <laughs> Excuse me, from the thread. I can't talk today. And then give it a couple wraps just to tie it in. And trim out those butt ends. So normally on this fly, the ostrich hurl is not reinforced. So to me, it seems like it would be a, a point of possible failure. So by wrapping it with the thread, we're just reinforcing it. Now I'm going to bring this little handy dandy patented <laughs> Norvice hackle guard up. We don't have really much hackle, but it'll help hold it out of the way a little bit. Um, we can put just a nice head on there. Give it a few turn whip finish, and there we have it. If you want, you can certainly use head cement on it. You don't have to if you've got a good whip finish, but you can use Sally Hansen or whatever your choice is. Take that off. Floof up that ostrich hurl a bit. See any in the eye, you can trim that out. Put a little bit there. But, um, and there it is, a Tunquanamid. So again, you can fish it, uh, tie it, and fish it between 4 and 16. Um, 
definitely fishy, boggy. I can't wait to get it in the water, uh, both in the lakes and our local rivers. Uh, with that, uh, thank you for joining me at my bench today. I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to the Norvice channel and like this video. And if you'd like, drop a comment down below. We'll talk to you later. Bye.